Welcome everybody to this course of Venus Anatomy. The knowledge of anatomy is mandatory for all phlebologists and surgeons. Why? Because they have to map and to treat the venous patient for the mapping and decision, but during the treatment also. During surgery, mini invasive or form, during endovenous procedures, which are mandatory, and during form injections. All these situations need US guidance. And the aim is to avoid complication of sclerotherapy, especially arterial injection. So the venous hemodynamical mapping is really the keystone of the treatment of chronic venous disease. You can see uh, the patient's standing position with the probe. So we scan the patient and the result is a map which is uh, shown on the right. On this map you can find uh, anatomical data but also hemodynamical data. And you see here uh, drawn in red the uh, segments which are reflecting. So the outline of this course is first uh, identification of the saphenous trunks, anatomy of the source saphenous vein and nerves, lymph node venous networks, anatomy of the perforator veins, pelvic linking points, and lastly, really printing of venous anatomy. So let's begin with the USD identification of the saphenous trunk. And you see here the echo image on the right with the great saphenous vein as an eye and the two layers. And on the left, the drawing of the Egyptian eye. So it's called the saphenous eye or Egyptian eye. By this sign, you can define the three venous compartments. So uh, you can see here on the echo image with a provocating maneuver, the reflux uh, with the red and blue color in the center of the eye. The eye is uh, surrounded by two fascia layers. The first, uh, the more superficial in yellow is the superficial fascia layer. And the second mark two is the muscular fascia or aponeurosis. What is the content of these three layers? First of all, uh, below the skin in you can find the epifacial veins, which are between the skin and the superficial fascial layer. Second, in between the two fascial layer, you can find the saphenous trunk. And lastly, Below the aponeurosis, you can find the deep venous trunks. Here you can see another drawing showing the saphenous compartment with the aponeurosis and the superficial fascia layer. And you can see the great saphenous vein trunk, GSV, which is here leaving the compartment. And this is not anymore the saphenous trunk, but this is an epifacial tributary, marked TR. And you can see on the horizontal slices, uh, you have one eye here at the top. You see the great saphenous vein leaving the compartments. And below that level, you can find two elements. One is the trunk inside the compartment, and the other is the epifacial tributary. And you are on the right, the same echo image. So in daily practice, you will find often about one third of the cases that image of an epifacial tributary leaving the compartment and which simulates the great saphenous vein as in the mapping on the right. 
So you can see marked one at this level, at this horizontal dotted line, the great saphenous vein is leaving the compartment, crossing the fascia. So below this line, you have two different elements, two veins. One, the first one is a two, mark two, it's dotted in marked in dotted line, is the competent great saphenous vein inside the compartment, thin and competent. And the second element, mark three, is the epifacial vein, which has the same diameter of the great saphenous vein and which is taking the reflux. So why is it important? Because for the treatment, for catheterization or invagination of the trunk, you have to know if the vein is inside the compartment or below the skin. Second chapter, the small saphenous vein and the nerves. And you can see a paper written in 2012. The most important point uh, to know is the sural pedicle. What is the sural pedicle? The sural pedicle is made of three elements. One is the small saphenous artery in red. Second, the sural nerve mark two in yellow, and lastly, the intergemellar vein, or vein of the sural nerve, mark three in blue. So these three elements are making what we call the sural pedicle, and you can see on the drawing, the sural nerve is a branch of the tibial nerve, uh, close to the small saphenous vein, ending part, and you can see that at the apex of the calf, uh, this branch, this is a medial branch, is joining the lateral branch, mark three, and the two branches are joining in a common trunk, which is the sural nerve itself, on the lower part of the calf, and very close to the small saphenous vein. Why is it important? Because in daily practice, uh, it is a danger. Uh, you can see marked with a uh, blue arrow, the intergemellar vein, and you can see that the small saphenous artery here, by in the echo image, is surrounding the small saphenous vein. So it is a danger, and any injection at that level could be done, should be done, with echo guidance. You can see here, uh, on the right, an anatomical dissection of the calf showing the same element and showing very nicely the sural pedicle with the nerve in yellow, the artery in red, and the vein in blue, while the superficial uh, veins are colored in light green by latex. Another point is the, the uh, vicinity of the small saphenous vein with the nerves in the popliteal fossa. And you can see an example of dissection here with the tibial nerve mark T. You can see the popliteal artery and vein. And you can see the ending part of the small saphenous vein marked with a purple dot. And very clearly, the great saphenous, uh, the small saphenous vein, so, is ending in the popliteal vein. You can see also the gastrocnemius veins with the blue dot. And here, which is clear, is that a nerve, which is a gastrocnemial, medial gastrocnemial nerve, is crossing the termination of the small saphenous vein. At the ankle level, it's also true. And you see here that the sural nerve the lower part of the sural nerve is very close, sticking to the small saphenous vein. And so, before a treatment of the small saphenous vein, that could be surger surgery, endovenous or injection, you should map not only the veins, but also the nerves. And you can see here, on the right, this map of the small saphenous vein at the calf, you can see uh, the, the sciatic nerve on the top, which is a very big uh, and shown by the echo. And you can find from superficial to deep the nerve, the vein, and the artery. 
In the middle echo image, you can see the popliteal uh, fossa and the tibial nerve and the perineal nerve with the popliteal vein. And lastly, on the calf, you can see the sural nerve, which is close to the surface. So, as a summary of this part, the small saphenous vein is very close to the nerve. The mapping of the nerve is mandatory before any treatment. The danger zone during the surgery has to be known. This is for endovenous procedure, especially laser treatment. And lastly, the foam injection is always eco-guided. The third chapter is about the lymph node venous networks of the groin. And you see a paper uh, which be, was be written in 2015 on this topic. What is the definition of the lymph node venous network of the groin? They have three characteristics. The first one is that they go through the inguinal nodes. The second, the network are connected with the great saphenous vein and mainly the anterior accessory great saphenous vein. And lastly, they are connected with direct perforator of the femoral vein. And you can see on the right, on the drawings, these network crossing the nodes. Uh, these uh, are very common in recurrent varicose vein after surgery, but they could be found before any treatment. You can see here on the left an anatomical dissection. Pourquoi il le fait pas Bon, bon, on fait escape. Quel connard, putain de fiche. You can see here on the left an anatomical dissection after latex injection of a fresh cadaver showing very nicely these nodes which are crossed by the venous networks uh, they are also connected to the perforators p and connected to the great saphenous vein and anterior accessory saphenous vein These networks could be found before any treatment, and we published a paper in French phlebology in 1999 showing that these reflux could be responsible for about six to eight primary reflux of the great saphenous trunk. On the right, you can see a 3D animation of the networks at the groin level. You see here two examples of lymph node venous networks, cast of latex, which is showing very nicely the veins crossing the nodes. This slide is showing the duplex identification of the lymph node venous networks. And you can see on the left, the round shape of the node marked with the two yellow arrows. In the center, you see a round shape with a low density. And if you make a Valsava maneuver, you can see in power uh, Doppler mode that this round shape is the vein inside the node which is refluxing during Vadalva. This is a case report of a reflux of the anterior accessory saphenous vein in a primary patient due to the lymph node venous networks. You can see the shape of the node in the different echo images and the 
node is marked by one, and inside the node, byte minus three, you can find a big network, Venus network, which is refluxing in Valsalva mark two. This is feeding the reflux of the anterior axis or esophagus vein, mark two on the map on the red and the red colored. So in clinical practice, sonographers should be aware about the presence of the leaf node venous networks because they could easily be missed or underestimated. And this is important because this diagnostic is an absolute contraindication of any groin approach and only foam injection is recommended in this case. In the chapter four, we'll see the anatomy of the perforator veins, which is divided in three topics, 3D modeling, interperforator anastomosis, and companion arteries and nerves. On this slide, you can see a 3D modeling of the side perforators obtained by CT venography and 3D reconstruction. On the left side, you can see the tie perforators called also anterior or dot perforators. And you can see in this case that you have a duplication of the saphenous vein, mark D, and each of the two trunks have a connection with an isolate perforators, mark P2, and connected to the femoral vein. On the right side, you can see the horizontal slices corresponding to the same model. On the top one, you can see the connection of the first trunk to the deep system, marked A, femoral vein. And on the lower part, you can see a duplicated connection of the perforators to the femoral vein. So this kind of model, 3D map, is helping in case of complex anatomy. This is another example of an investigation of leg perforator veins with 3D modeling. And you can see on the left the different medial leg perforators at different levels. A paratibial, super paratibial, inferior paratibial, and posterior tibial perforator veins. On the lower 3D reconstruction, you can also see the cocket or posterior tibial perforators connecting to the posterior tibial veins. All the perforators on the slices are colored in red. So why is it so important to have a good information about the perforators anatomy because of the complexity of these networks, and this complexity is underestimated. In reality, it's not single perforator veins, but a network, and you can see on the dissection on the lower part that these perforators, colored in red, are connected in between them by a yellow connection, which we call an interperforator anastomosis. This is very common in the paratibial location. And this could be an explanation of the disappointing results of the treatments reported by André Van Rich in GVS in 2007. Here we can see the image of this interperforator anastomosis, which is connecting in yellow all the perforators vein of the leg, all these elements are below apronevrosis. And you can also see the hemodynamical levels of these perforators marked in yellow labels, which are always the same for a, a special tibial length. Another important anatomical feature 
uh, of the perforators of the leg is the companion arteries. This dissection with injection of latex, of green latex of the superficial system, is also showing the perforators colored in yellow and for each of them the corresponding small artery, tiny arteries, which are separately injected with a red latex. If we zoom on this image, we can see very nicely the perforating arteries, which are companion arteries of the perforator veins. Here, in more zoom, you can see also these same tiny arteries, colored in red, injection by red latex, and you see the perforator which is next to the artery. So, the take-home message for foam injection of perforators regarding this anatomical feature are always look for companion arteries, do not inject close to the fascia, and always use an echo guidance, an echo control, which is mandatory if you inject the perforators. Now let's go to the fifth chapter, which is the pelvic linking points. And we have two topics for this, the varix of the ischiatic nerves and the P-point reflux. We begin with the varix of the sheet of the sciatic nerve, and you can see on the left a, a skin map of a patient with a calf varix, and you can see that this calf varix is not fed by the small saphenous vein, which is uh, marked in dotted line, competent, but by a vein which is going up deeply in the thigh that we call an axial vein. Uh, on the right, you can see the 3D reconstruction showing uh, better in better definition with was this. You see that this vein, marked 1, which is the axial vein, is located along the ischiatic nerve, marked 3, and this is the feeding point of the varix, while here you can find the femoral vein in blue. The same anatomy with uh, an animation, the 3D reconstruction, showing the axial vein along the ischiatic nerve. So second observation is the P-point with arterial compression. You can see here the skin map of a patient before an operation, and you can see that the varicose vein is in the great saphenous vein territory, the trunk is incompetent, but the feeding point of the trunk is not the great saphenous termination, the inguinal, the groin, and the junction with the femoral vein, but it is a P-point which is located in the perineal area. And of course, it is interesting to have more information on this. You see here the Swedish reconstruction with the same anatomy and the P point, which is a feeding point of the reflux. And here you can see when we remove the muzzle, you can see the P point in the inguinal, the alcock canal. And the animation here is showing more. You can see at the top the groove on the vena cava and the common left common iliac vein, which is a compression by the artery. Now let's have a look at the femoral vein. You can see this vein, which is the internal pudendal vein in the Alcock canal which is feeding the P-point. If we go more closer, we can follow this vein in the hypogastric area, in the pelvic 
area and you can see here very nicely the obturator vein, the pudendal vein and the gluteal vein. On the left you can see the sacral plexus which is one of the tributaries of the hypogastric vein. And now if we modify the transparency and we look for the arteries, you can see the location of the right common iliac artery, which is making a groove, a compression of the venous axis, marked by a blue arrow. That we call a pseudo Turner syndrome and this is the cause of compression and a cause of varicose veins of the lower limb. Here we see the same patient with a 3D reconstruction in color and you can see once again the compression of the artery on the vena cava at the top here is the hypogastric vein color in purple with the sacral plexus in blue and lastly in the femoral area and obturator area you can see the obturator vein and the internal pudendal vein which is connected to the great saphenous vein to the femoral vein by the medial circumflex vein the last chapter is about the 3d printing of anatomical models from a CT angiography. So how to 3D print vessels from a CT angiography? This slide is showing our methodology. We start by our software, which is using the data of the CT venography, which are in a DICOM format. This software is providing a 3D vectorial model. The second step is the use of mesh mixer software. This is cleaning and repairing the vectorial model produced by ORUS. And lastly, when the model is ready, we use Cura, which is dedicated to 3D printing. All these software are free and freely available on the internet. This is an example of a ring-shaped termination of the small saphenous vein. As you can see, the small saphenous vein is painted in pink, and you can also see that there is a common trunk between the gastrocnemial veins, colored in green, and the small saphenous vein. The popliteal vein and roots are painted in dark blue. You can see here other examples of SSV terminations. On the right, you can see uh, an erism of the saphenous papillary junction. The small saphenous vein is uh, colored in pink. You can see also the great saphenous vein on the right, 
colored in light blue. So popliteal vein and the roots are colored in dark blue. And the gastric nemial veins are colored in green. You can see also a communicating vein between the small saphenous and the great saphenous vein colored in red. On the left side, you can see another example of a duplication of the small saphenous vein termination in the popliteal vein. And you can also see a psi extension of the small saphenous vein colored in red. This is showing some examples of the small saphenous vein termination. On the left, you can see a Giacomini vein and a dystrophic uh, termination of SSV uh, painted in purple. Uh, you can also see uh, perforators, which are uh, colored in red. And at the tile level, you can see the arcades, the venous arcades of the semimembranosus model. On the middle, you can see a common trunk of the gastrocnemial veins colored in green with the small saphenous vein and also together a psi extension of the small saphenous vein. And on the right side, you can see a high termination of the small saphenous vein, which is connected to the arcades of the semimembranosus model draining upwards in the deep femoral vein. This slide is showing another example of a 3D printed model of the venous system. Here it is a duplication of the femoral vein and you can see in blue colored the femoral vein on the left pointed with blue arrows, while on the right you can see a big axial vein, which is bigger than the femoral vein. On the right you can see the small saphenous vein with a purple arrow connected to the deep system. You can also see with uh, black arrows a collateral canal of the popliteal vein with two connections. And lastly, you can also see on the lower part the medial gastrocnemial veins, which are colored in green. This is another example of a 3D printed model. In this case, we have a complex anatomy with a trifurcation of the femoral vein. You can see on the left a big axial vein. This is uh, an axial vein because it's along the ischiatic nerve pointed with the red arrows. The second axis is made with the deep femoral vein, which is painted in green. And lastly, on the right, you have in blue the normal femoral vein. As you can see, the axial vein is joining the deep femoral vein in a big deep femoral vein trunk pointed by the white row on the top. Lastly, you can also uh, see that you have a small saphenous vein which is pointed by the purple arrow and this is connected to the axial vein at different levels, as well as with the popliteal vein, with a complex anatomy. On this 3D printed model of the foot, you can see the foot veins and particularly the plantar pump. The foot pump is here represented by 
the lateral plantar veins, which are colored in green. You can see also laterally the small saphenous vein and roots colored in purple. And finally, the foot perforators are colored in red. Now it's time for conclusion. Commonly, we have a lack of information of the whole venous network in our patients. So an in-depth investigation of the deep veins by color duplex could probably explain some so-called primary CVD. And finally, we should have more detailed 3D map provided by CT venography in complex cases in addition to the venous hemodynamical mapping. Thank you very much for attention. All of you are kindly invited to participate to the masterclass of Venus Imaging in Paris, which will be held in the University uh, of Descartes in the 6th and 7th of June 2020. You can see here the website address if you want more information or registration.